Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Bienvenidos. We're so happy to have all of you joining us today for this core coffee chat, where we're going to learn about and hear about how uh, some youth leaders are gathering information, sharing it with their peers uh, about COVID vaccines to just help everyone make informed uh, decisions that feel right for them. And so we're very pleased to have um, a set of special guests with us today. We'll introduce them in just a moment. Uh, but for now, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Nicole Young, and I'm one of the consultants that facilitates what's called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments, along with my colleague, Nicole Lezen. And we will be your, your guides today. Uh, so again, CORE stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. And it started off as a funding model that the county and city of Santa Cruz adopted now almost five years ago. Um, as a way to fund evidence-based safety net services. But over the last several years, the work that Nicole Les and I have been doing has really uh, led to this growing movement where CORE is more than just a way to uh, give out funds, that it, it really has grown into this movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County using a results-based collective impact approach that's responsive to community needs. So it just means that we're finding new and different ways, better ways uh, to continuously work together to achieve that goal or that vision of equity in health and well-being. And so some of the things that have come out of that work are these mission statements and the vision statements that you see on the screen where there are keywords like collective action, safe, healthy community, thriving, resilient, shared responsibility. So again, speaking to how it's not just one organization or one uh, type of organization that's responsible for creating a healthy community. It's all of us doing this work together. Next slide. And when we talk about equity and health and well-being, what we mean is that we want to truly get to a place someday where uh, people's opportunities and their um, quality of life and the things that they're able to achieve aren't predictable or controlled by, you know, for better or for worse, by things like race or ethnicity or gender or immigration status or primary language, that we all have these equitable opportunities to achieve these things in life. And so again, that requires us to think holistically about what health and well-being means, that it's, um, you know, health and wellness is very much tied to education. Uh, which is very much tied to economic security and mobility and con uh, community connectedness that we have to understand and think about and work together in ways that connects all the dots between these different aspects of health and well-being with equity at the center. And so today, again, our topic is uh, one way that we bring people together to learn about particular issues, to hopefully develop some new skills or new language or ways of uh, sharing information. And we're doing this under what we call the Core Institute for Innovation and Impact. So that's just a name for these different learning opportunities that we host or convene as part of Core. Um, these Core Coffee Chats, like today, sometimes we have longer Core Conversations that focus specifically on racial equity. Uh, but we also host and provide or, or uh, offer a variety of skill building trainings as well as part of the Core Institute. So we're happy to see you all here today. Welcome to anybody that is new and joining a Core event for the first time. We hope to see you again at future events. So I'm going to turn it over to Nicole to tell us more about our plan for today. Thanks, Nicole. So welcome everyone. We are very excited today to have a great lineup of people who've been working on educating themselves about COVID-19 vaccinations and sharing what they've learned with others. So we're gonna hear from the Food What team, Daron Comerchero and Lupita Rojas, and from Teen Salud, Amoria Perez, and Dr. Farah Sabah, our great uh, superintendent of schools at the Santa Cruz County Office of Education, who's been doing all kinds of work um, on COVID-19 vaccines that you'll hear about alongside his regular day job of organizing education in our county. So you'll hear from each of them for about 10 minutes, and then we'll have time for questions and answers at the end. 
So we want to encourage you to keep your questions coming through the um, through the chat, and Nicole and I will monitor those and try to group them for the so we'll have time to pose them to our panelists today. Um, if you don't know about Food What or Teen Salud, those um, will provide some links to those organizations as well. So Daron is the executive director of Food What, and Lupita is part of a COVID-19 communications project and a fresh graduate from Watsonville High School. So congratulations to you, Lupita. She's been doing some great videos that we'll get a chance to see to educate her peers. And Amoria has been doing an Instagram um, feed about COVID-19. So both of them will tell you about ways that they've been using social media, the ways to communicate effectively with their peers in ways that some of us uh, older people may not be as adept with. So we, we, we're all here to learn from you. And then Ferris, as I mentioned, will talk about what the County Office of Ed is doing in conjunction with healthcare providers and our public health system to make sure that people can safely return to the classroom in the fall. So a lot to cover. Um, we are very excited to have all of you together and I'll turn it over to Daron to get things flowing. Okay, good morning. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly, thank you. Right, just double checking. So it's a pleasure to be with you all this morning to dive into this conversation on the important topic of youth vaccination. I'd like to start with a thank you to Nicole and Nicole for inviting us to the table today. You'll see we're literally at a table, which is a treat to be in person and to be able to do this somewhat communally. And a quick introduction. My name is Jerome Camachero. I'm the executive director of Food What, and I will be your host today. Food What is a youth empowerment and food justice program serving some of our county's most resilient teenage youth. At Food What, youth engage in relationships with land, food, and each other. And using food and farming, we provide meaningful space where youth define and cultivate their empowerment, their liberation, and their well being. I'd like to start by inviting each of our three guests on today's panel to just say a quick introduction who you are and then we'll dive into some questions. So Dr. Ferris Sabah, would you offer a quick introduction? Hi everybody, uh, Ferris Sabah with the County Office of Education. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, so uh, any opportunity I get to work with uh, folks like uh, Daron and, and, uh, and Nicole and Nicole uh, is, is time well spent. And so uh, wonderful to be here to share a little bit and to learn with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Uh, thank you all for having me here. I'm Vita Rojas and I work with Foodwat. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Hello, my name is Amariah Perez and I'm 15 years old and I'm part of Team Salud. All right. Well, thank you everybody for being with us today and to the panelists. Thank you in advance for sharing your wisdom and your experience. So our plan this morning is to interview each of our guests on the unique angle on youth vaccinations on which they hold, and then to have five or 10 minutes at the end for Q&A. Now much of today's conversation will center around the 12 to 15 year old and 16 to 17 year old vaccine eligible youth population. And I'd like to start by uplifting some of the incredible efforts that youth, two of whom are on the panel here today, have been leading in a peer-to-peer -peer context and in the culture and the vibe of youth to support local teens in their vaccine journey. So just yesterday, youth from Empower Watsonville and other partner youth organizations put on a youth vaccine pop-up clinic at Watsonville High School, and that resulted in 71 youth getting their first vaccine dose, which is a huge success. Lupita will share about the videos that she's been producing that have been disseminated to thousands of local high school teens over the past 10 weeks. And Amariah was part of an Instagram live series, which is open to any age group, regardless of what Nicole said, even if this is new technology, you could dive in and, and you could love it. Um, and that live series was led by youth to debunk the vaccine myths and share resources to youth across a broad spectrum of support. So before we dive in, I'd like to just start with a few data points to contextualize where we are. 
And this information comes from a call with Dr. Gail Newell from last Friday, so it's very relevant, it's very timely, as part of the South County COVID-19 triage group. So to start, our level of immunity in this county from folks who either have had COVID-19 or who have either been fully or partially vaccinated is around 73% of our county population. So let's start with that. When we think of 12 to 15 year olds, there's around 13,000 of them in our county, of which 41% are partially or fully vaccinated. And of the 16 to 19 age group, there's about 20,000, and they are about 38% partially or fully vaccinated. And three more quick points to share. It's now official that the COVID-19 vaccine can be given at the same time as other vaccines to the 12 plus age group. The hope is that this will increase the number of vaccinations for youth who are still getting their slate of recommended vaccines through their primary pediatrician. An example of that would be the Tdap shot. Um, as you might know, the only vaccine that youth under age 18 are eligible to receive is the Pfizer vaccine, and that's a two-shot vaccine. And vaccine options for youth under the age of 12 are still in clinical trials and are expected to receive emergency use authorization towards the end of the year. So with that, I'm going to jump in with my friend Amarai here to set the table for us to better understand some of the questions and the concerns and the myths that youth are grappling with in their decision to get vaccinated. So Amarai, I'm going to turn your way, pardon my back for a minute. Um, so recently you led an Instagram live series through Teen Salute entitled Youth Vaccine Myth Busters where you solicited youth questions. You asked youth in your group Teen Salute and you also asked over this technology through Instagram, what were their concerns? And then you went through them one by one and you had as your guest the head of nursing, Nurse Danielle from Salute para la Gente. Yes. Would you share with our guests today what some of the youth questions and concerns were? And I know you have an extensive list, but I think this will really get to the heart of what are young people concerned about? So if you feel comfortable reading those out, that would be great. There is quite a few questions, but some of them include, do teens get the same symptoms as adults when getting the shot? I heard that you become unable to get pregnant after getting vaccinated. Will the vaccine counteract with my birth control? What's the point of getting the vaccine if there's so many variants? I heard that you can get herpes from getting the shot. I heard that teens can only get one type of vaccine. Is that true and which one should we get? I'm young and healthy, so why should I get the vaccine? I already had COVID, so what's the point of getting the vaccine? How will the vaccine change the way we socialize? I heard someone local died from the shot, so why should I get it and risk my life? Does my parent need to go with me to get my shot? And does my parent have to agree to me getting the shot? Is it true that the vaccine has a chip in it to track us? I heard that the vaccine should only be given to adults because teens haven't fully developed yet and it's going to affect the way we grow. Is it true that the vaccine is going to make my period heavier and my cramps worse? I read on the news that the vaccine is going to cause a zombie apocalypse. Let's discover there. Is that one true? No. Okay, keep going. Is it true that the vaccine can cause really bad side effects and cause you to become immobile? And is it true that when you get the vaccine, they use your DNA to do experiments? Hmm. Okay, those are serious questions. And I'm curious, uh, what was Dr. or what was Nurse Danielle's response to most of these? Um, on the question about do teens get the same symptoms as adults, Danielle responded, yes, teens do get the same symptoms as adults, although everyone does react differently. It's just our antibody immune response from the vaccine. And another one was, if I'm young and healthy, why should I get the vaccine? And Danielle responded, it's about the people we affect. So a lot of people who get COVID can spread the virus to the community and affect someone who maybe isn't as healthy as you. 
And another one is, I heard that teens can only get one type of vaccine. And Danielle responded, yes, that is true. Right now, anyone under the age of 18 can only get the Pfizer vaccine. And another one was that, is it true that the vaccine can cause really bad side effects? So as far um, to become immobile, and as far as causing you to be immobile, that would be due to Guillain-Barre, which is typically only found in live vaccines, and so not the COVID vaccine. So it's very unlikely that you'll become immobile. Were you surprised with any of either the questions or Nurse Danielle's responses? Yes, I was actually pretty surprised by some of them. Um, for example, one of the other questions was if the vaccine will cause your arm to rot. And I thought that was really interesting because I've never heard that myth before. And no, it won't cause your arm to rot. Okay, good. You heard it here. Glad that that one's off the list. So I wanted to ask you one or two more questions before we go to Lupita. And this is a question that came up in the chat. What would you tell your friends or, or a peer who you're in conversation and they, they're like, no, nah, I'm not really interested. I don't want to get vaccinated. Maybe they give you one of these concerns. Maybe they don't. Do you have a response? Do you have a way to have that conversation with them? Yeah, um, I would just remind them on how important it is to get back to our daily life, like getting back to school or work, and ultimately really keeping everyone safe to decrease COVID numbers. And you got vaccinated? Yes. And can you just share a minute about how your experience was getting vaccinated, how you felt going into it, how it went, what you felt on the backside? Well, I was kind of nervous going in just because I don't really like shots, but um, I actually had a pretty positive experience. Um, I only had like a a sore arm, so I didn't have too severe symptoms. Great. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. I'm going to turn this way. Excuse my back for me. <laughs> All right, Lupita, let's talk. Um, share a little bit with our audience today, if you would, about the project you've been working on. Okay. Well, greetings. I'm Lupita Rojas, and the project that I've been working on has been um, motivated by me wanting to do more for my community. And this project is me making videos for my peers to get them informed because I knew when I wasn't informed, I kind of felt like an outsider of the world when all these adults were talking to a British, I didn't know what was happening, you know? So I kind of thought with the information that I know, I can switch it into words where my peers understand and get the information that they need because I know when things are going down like this, um, you kind of want comfort to like know that everything's okay and know what's going on around you. And um, knowing that I didn't know that, I knew that my peers possibly didn't know that. So I wanted to put all the information out there so they could be um, informed like me as well. So the faster everyone gets informed, the faster we can go back to normal. So yeah. everyone can get their shots, everyone can get their information to make their decisions and they won't be left out in the blue as in like they don't know what to do. You know? Mm -hmm. And where, clearly I know the answer to this question, but for I guess, where did you get your information from? Um, I would be with the trusted resources that would be, of course, Foodway and of course working with Salud para la Gente and um, it would be the board every Friday at 11 in the morning. It would be an hour of discussion and if I had any questions or if my peers came to me, with any questions, I would ask after the meeting. Yeah, so I'll share a little bit about that. Every Friday, there's a group um, that convenes, and it's called the South County COVID-19 Triage Group. And we have the privilege of having either Mimi Hall or Dr. Gail Newell um, or Jen Herrera, some of the, the, the leads of the COVID response in our county, come and share with us the most updated information in a really digestible format. And Lupita joined us on those calls Friday mornings and then Friday afternoons. We'd work on the videos and then early the next week they would get disseminated through the school systems. And basically what was created was a direct channel to get these videos to students. So in essence, thousands of students were able to have this very relevant, very timely information and in the voice of youth. So a few more questions about this. Um, so you and I got to share a lot of stories as we were working on the videos. And 
One of the stories was about something your mom said to your dad about getting vaccinated. Yeah. Can I invite you to share that story? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, please. <laughs> so um, my father and my sister got the shot before my mother and I did because my mother was a little scared and my father and sister were certain that they were sure that they wanted their shot already. So when my dad was complaining about his shot, my mom kind of just looked at him and laughed and said, oh, stop complaining. Like, after administration and, like, having children and everything, this is nothing, you know? Like, she took a shot like a chap, and she's like, Look, I'm up around walking around doing everything I need to do. And my dad was in bed like, oh, my head. Like, it was so <laughs> funny. <laughs> and one of the things that I noticed in what you chose to share in your videos and what information you chose you always had a very personal side to those videos, right? Like I remember when you shared that video, um, when you shared that story in the video, why did you choose to share those personal pieces? Why not just share the information, zip it out and be done? Why, what, was, what was the reason for the personal side of things? Well, I mean, I know that we're all human, so kind of just letting them know that they're not alone. You know, like we're all going through this and like, some of us will take the shot, like my dad will be little babies and better, you know, but some of us will be like my mom and like, it's okay, you know, we're going to be strong, we're going to get through it, to just put comfort out there that like, you're not alone, this is my story, I hope yours is going as great as well, you know. Hmm. And did you get any responses from youth? Peers, friends, people you know, people you didn't know. Uh, yes, um, I got a lot of responses. Some were really good and some were kind of like, whoa, you know? Um, the first response that I actually got was my sister-in-law worked at um, Salud Para La Gente. And I didn't know that my videos were being shown here as well. I thought they were just for school. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she told me, she's like, did you know that I see your videos every day at work? I was like, whoa, really? And she's like, yeah. I was like, oh, that's so awesome. Like, I feel honored, you know? She's like, thank you. And she was like, no, thank you. She's like, it's really cool what you're doing. And mm -hmm. like, just to be noticed like that, that was like really awesome for me. And as well as like my peers, like some of them would text me and be like, I see what you do. I watch your videos with my mom. Like, mm -hmm. that's so awesome, you know? And I'd be like, with your mom? Like, oh my God, I miss her, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there'd also be peers that would come to me and be like, oh, hey, I saw your video and I thought that we can get a vaccine this day. Where would it be? Um, do I need this? Do I need that? And just student questions. And um, there was a point where I did get like a bad comment that was like, oh, you're a puppet. You know, like they're making you do all of that. And it's kind of like made me think like, wow, do people think I am a puppet? But I know myself, you know, I know what I put out there. And that's another reason why I put out my story. As in like, I'm not a puppet, you know, I have feelings and my family has feelings and we're all going through this and I'm just doing it for the better of everyone, you know? Nice. And why was... Why was getting vaccinated important to you outside of this project, just as a person in our community? In general, when I first found out about COVID, um, I was really scared for like the whole world. I thought everything was going to collapse and everybody was going to die, you know? So I thought like, I need to get my information quick. I need to know like what to do next, how to inform everybody else so we can all be safe in the like, best way possible. So when I found out about the vaccine, um, it was really important to me to get vaccinated to make sure that my family was okay, and to make sure that um, I won't be spreading anything else around my community. Great. And I think at this point, I'm gonna invite the Nicoles to please play one of your videos. This will be the one of you getting vaccinated. Is that something you all can do? Hi, I'm, I'm Lamita Rojas. I'm from Fuidwa, and I'm a senior at What's More High. I made this video to show you all what it's like to get the vaccine. Hi guys, we're about to go get a vaccine. I'm very scared, very nervous, but see how it goes. It's such a journey. Hi. Are you here for your first dose or second dose? For my first dose. First dose. Can I have your uh, last name, please? Roja. R O J A S. Uh, Lupita? Okay, sounds very good. So, it looks like you're going to get Moderna uh, first dose today. And you're all set. I'm just Hi, my name is Patricia. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. So, I have some questions to ask you to make sure you're safe for the vaccine today. Hi there. 
Hello. Increment of one person is receiving their dose of Moderna today. That's correct. So favorite. Hi, uh, Hi, My name's Jan. Which arm do you want to use? Okay. Oh, can I do the left? Absolutely. Um, so just give, take your jacket off. Mm -hmm. Is oh. it okay if I get off and sit over there? Or would I have to do it? In you don't have. Room? You don't have to. If you would prefer to come out and sit in the tent, it's fine. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Okay. I know. So nice and relaxed. <laughs> You're getting your first mm -hmm. dose of uh -huh. yeah. So we have a total of 188 for Oh, hold on. Can I get a slide? Like, um, just yeah, give me a sec. I'll be okay. looking away. Um, okay. maybe just like giggle or laugh or something well, for I was a sec. Ask you what you did? What you did today? That was cool. Um, it was really good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What you um, nice deep breath for you. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take a deep breath. All right. That was nothing. That felt really quick. That's yeah. easy. Oh, okay. okay. That was really good. <laughs> Okay. And you're going to need to return on the 26 for your second dose. Okay, thank and you. Keep this with you or, or bring that with you when you, you come back. 26. Okay. okay. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. I'm going to walk with you. to go to bed but I just wanted to come on here and check in with you guys and tell you guys how I'm feeling so I'm still feeling pretty good the only thing that's bothering me a little is my hand it just feel a little bit heavier and I can definitely feel where I got the shot but other than that I'm good and I'll keep you updated great thanks for playing that so a follow-up question why why was it important to you to make a video of yourself getting vaccinated to share with your peers um, I know that it was an experience that like a lot of people wouldn't want to go through alone and I knew that a lot of people didn't know where the whole vaccination was happening or how it was going to roll through. Um, so people would text me and tell me like, oh, where's it going to be? But I thought it was really important to like make that video to let them know that like if you're going to get vaccinated, come get vaccinated with me, you know, like I got my vaccination, it went smoothly, I hope the same like goes for you, you know. And to let them know that, like, my experience um, went that way and to, like, give them comfort and where, like, I didn't turn into a zombie, you know, like, or, <laughs> Good. or like, um, it didn't hurt my body too much where I was, like, in bed, like, in pain, you know, like, it was just a little heavier and that's it, nothing bad. Great. Thanks, Lupita. <laughs> okay, and now, um, Dr. Ferris, I'd like to invite you to our table here. And um, I have a few questions for you. The first one is, could you please share a little bit about what the County Office of Ed and your partners in districts across the counties have been doing to support youth vaccination, especially as these younger age demographics have become eligible to get the vaccine? Thank you, Doron, and, and uh, I have to say, Lupita, you, you are quite a celebrity in, uh, for us, and so <laughs> thank you for everything that you're doing. Uh, thank you for speaking up on behalf of, of, our, of our youth. And uh, I'd like to share a little bit about what we've been working on for vaccinations uh, for in general and then specifically for young people and how we need uh, leaders like Lu uh, Lupita to help us uh, with kind of uh, the continued effort 
um, that uh, you know that MRI and and, and Lupita are, are helping us lead uh, today. And so um, we're so grateful to have your voices uh, here because that's that's exactly what we're going to need for the next phase. Uh, so we started. I'm going to share a little bit of my uh, screen if that's okay, and and just uh, do a little uh, just share a few slides. Um, and so um, let's uh, turn this on here. And uh, so we, uh, with the County Office of Education, we, we started, let me get this over here. Um, we started uh, vaccinating folks in, uh, starting in February, uh, you know, right when we were authorized to do so. And, and uh, we started, we focused on our teachers and, and, and uh, uh, to help try to get our schools opened up. And as you know, we're, we're, we're all working on, on uh, we're focusing on our 12 and up. Uh, and I think that uh, we're expecting that five to 11 year olds, according to public health and the California Department of Public Health, that we're expecting that in September, October, that that younger age group is gonna be able to get, to get authorized also for vaccination. And um, so we're planning the opening of schools and we know that you know, we think that the majority of young people are not going to be vaccinated by the time school starts in August. Is, and, but we're working really hard to try to maximize that because we recognize that just like uh, uh, Amariah said earlier, um, it's not only about uh, uh, protecting young people, but it's also about protecting who those young people connect with, their families, the community. And so it's really a group kind of commitment that we have to make sure that that we're doing everything we can to get as many people vaccinated so we have because we have the shared responsibility for each other. And so when we open up schools, we're, you know, because we're not going to have 100% of our, our, our community vaccinated, we're still going to be isolating folks who may be getting sick, quarantining folks that, that may be exposed, um, we'll continue with disinfecting, but we're confident that we're going to be opening up our schools fully across the county. And not have any hybrid or or you know shutdowns unless some, there's a big increase in the amount of uh, of COVID nineteen in, in our community. So we've been partnering with a lot of different uh, uh, partners, a lot of medical providers, our public health department, Dominican Hospital, Dignity, Salupa La Gente. We also work with Safeway and Rite Aid. And uh, of course, all the school districts have come together, uh, partnering with agencies like Food What, the South County COVID-19 group. Um, and we, you know, one of the things that we were reminded uh, as part of the COVID-19 crisis was how important schools were. And when students weren't able to go to school, it really created a disconnect for a lot of young people. And, and so one of the things that we're working on is to create, to, to restore schools as the place for students to be able to, to get a lot of the support services they need. And part of that is also a place where, a safe place where they can also get vaccinated. And that's one of the reasons why we've been doing a lot of clinics at schools. But students have their support systems, their teen, uh, their, their, their teen support systems, the school support systems, uh, counseling services. Uh, in many cases, uh, uh, we, we have medical services like Salud La Gente on campus. Uh, you know, schools are such an important place and families know that schools are not worried about the immigration status of families. This is a place where, where you know, you can go to uh, get food distributions from, from Second Harvest Food Bank. And so that, the importance of, of schools, I think was a, we were reminded with COVID-19 how important schools are and they're gonna to continue to be extremely important, especially because young people had such a tough time with COVID-19 and feeling isolated during the pandemic. Uh, we've seen higher levels of anxiety, higher levels of, of depression and suicidal ideation. And so we wanna make sure to bring as many support services to our, to our youth and, and, and families as possible. So when it comes to the vaccines, you know, in, in some ways it's, it's brought us together to be able to work together on this, on this, uh, this, this cause. It allowed us to open up our schools and, and we, as I shared earlier, getting vaccinated is not only about protecting our youth, it's also about, about protecting their families and protecting the community at large. So some of the strategies, you know, we started off with these big clinics, you know, we could serve 500, 600, 700 people in one day. And pretty soon we realized that, that that strategy is not working as effectively. It worked at first for the for the youth that were really motivated, that were ready to go, that you know were, were excited about getting um, uh, getting vaccinated. But the majority of youth that we've talked to, as 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 both Marian and uh, and Lupita shared, there's a there's there's different fears, different myths, different concerns that youth have, and their parents. 
And so we are recognizing that we need to have a family approach, that we can't assume that, that if, uh, if we convince a, a young person to go, that they would be able to go because if the parents are concerned, then they might not be able to go. And the opposite is true as well. If we could work with families and parents, and, and they may be thinking that it's good for their, 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 their child, their youth to, to be able to go. But if they're not, if the youth is not, a uh, young person is not ready to do it, then it's not going to happen. And so we think it's really important to have messaging for both parents and for youth. And I think the, the importance of youth voices, I think, is, has been, I, we're seeing it so much that when we talk to young people, you know, that, that generational divide where an older person is, is telling a young person, this is something you should do. It's very different than hearing it from Lupita saying, I've done the research myself. I've read the conspiracy uh, stories. Uh, I've done, you know, and I know what's going on and I know this is in the best interest for me and my family. And I think that, that the importance of, of creating more of those opportunities for, for young people uh, to be able to hear from other young people, young leaders is, is more important than ever, especially with the, with the reluctant youth who are reluctant to get vaccinated. We need to continue creating trusted messengers, as, as you well know. Um, we need to have students lead events. The PVPSA and, and Food What uh, event that took place yesterday at Watsonville High School was amazing. I, I got to visit and check it out. Um, all, there was all these different agencies there. There were raffles, there was music. There's all these young people there that were, were supporting with the organization. We had Safeway there uh, providing the actual vaccinations. Uh, was very well organized and walk-ins were welcome. I saw families come in much smaller than what we, what we had been planning before. And, and, and so this new approach that was done mostly by young people, mostly from Power Watsonville and other leaders like Food What, um, I think that's the model that we're gonna be looking at to, to continue to get these smaller pockets of, of youth to be able to get vaccinated. And I saw a lot of families come together. I saw both parents, lots of kids coming in and, and, and younger kids who are still too young to get vaccinated, looking at their older brother or sister getting vaccinated. And you could tell by the look in their face that once they're authorized to, uh, for that age group that they're gonna be there first in line to get vaccinated. And so I think that this is a model that we're gonna wanna replicate and um, you know, have these pop-up clinics at different locations really kind of create, celebrate it and have youth leading the organization and the implementation of, of, of these with, with support from adults. And um, that's uh, um, all I wanted to share with you about uh, what we've been working on. You know, we're really excited about, about continuing our efforts to try to get to, you know, that when we look at the number of adults, we've reached about 70% of, of, of adults have gotten at least one dose in Santa Cruz County, according to public health. But the number for youth is much smaller and we know that we have a lot more work to do. And so the importance of this work right now is, is, is really, really high. And, and I think, you know, there's gonna be more, uh, opportunities for people who are fully vaccinated versus people who are not fully vaccinated. And so there's a benefit here, not only to keep us all safe, but I think there's a benefit too that when it comes to things like uh, face coverings and get togethers and, and different ways of, of connecting, being fully vaccinated is gonna give us, because we're gonna be, our, we're gonna be more protected, we're gonna have uh, more freedom in, in, in different ways. And so it's something that, that I think there's gonna be benefits that, that people are gonna be excited about as, as we move uh, forward with this, with this pandemic. But um, I just wanna, I wanna just give a big shout out to, to our, our student leaders who are gonna be helping, we're gonna be uh, supporting, but they're gonna be leading us into this next phase of, of, uh, of vaccination. And we're so excited to work with you and, and, and learn from you and, and uh, support our youth. Thank you so much for letting me share just a little bit. Thanks so much, appreciate it. So at this point we have a few moments for Q and A and I'm wondering, Nicole, if we could lean into you for if you could put in the chat a few of the questions that have come up and we'll take it from there. While you're doing that, I could start with one that came up very early. Uh, it was a question about how to speak to youth about getting vaccinated. Maybe I'd start with either Amariah or Lupita. Do you have any thoughts for an adult audience on what would be an approach for connecting with youth about getting vaccinated? Would you like to go? You can start. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I do believe that um, coming from a youth voice, it, it is a little bit more helpful to another youth. 
because um, sometimes when an adult tells a kid to do something, they're kind of just going to be like, oh, like it's just an adult telling me what to do, like as always, you know? But when they used to use talk to each other, it's kind of going to be like a conversation as in like, um, I know where you're coming from, I know how you're feeling, and like this is the information. And the best thing that an adult can do for like, uh, like a teen is probably just give them the information. Like don't push them to it, because then they'll feel like they have to do it. Just like let them know that it's best for their safety and best for the people around them. Thank you. Anything you want to add? Um, I would say just giving them kind of like the option instead of being like, okay, you have to. Like, give them all the information and let them like decide because, you know, I know if someone told me you have to do that, I probably wouldn't want to. I don't want to like know all the information first. So, yeah. And I could share as the vaccine became available, something that I started to do is just to check in with youth in the Food Web program what their thoughts were. And really that was the beginning of a conversation and letting it unfold because for a number of the young people that we serve at Food What, there is a lot of hesitancy, there is a lot of concern. And the first step really felt from an adult perspective was questioning and listening and then pausing and coming back to that conversation down the road, seeing if anything changed, things like that. So that's another suggestion. All right, I see a few more questions. Um, question for Lupita and Amariah. From your perspective, would incentivizing youth be a good strategy or based on your experience, is it more based on addressing myth busters and sharing experience? So incentivizing, offering gift cards or offering money or something that, or there are other incentives. I would, I would say that yesterday at the Empower Watsonville event, um, having having the pizza there and having a festive environment, that's also an incentive. What do you two think about incentives to get young people who are a little concerned at this point if they're gonna get their vaccine to try to get over that hump to get vaccinated? Um, I think I would probably just try and make it like a positive experience and not really being like, okay, I'll give you that. Like, okay, we'll, we'll go out for pizza and ice cream and then like just making it like a positive thing and give, also giving them all the information so they're not just like, it's more of like an experience. Yeah, I'm definitely with you on that um, because sometimes I feel like if people are like, oh, we'll give you this if you come and get the shot. As in like saying like, um, probably like persuading them into getting the shot. But I feel like it's, I really like that. I really like the idea, like when they first started doing like the boba, like it's a reward, like congratulations, you did it, you know, you're part of the team, you know? Like for me, I really like that. But um, I definitely, definitely, definitely agree with um, like the experience type as well, because um, when you're not gonna go into something not knowing what you're getting yourself into, you know? So kind of just telling them the information like this and this is what's going to happen and then these people have gone through that experience because everyone goes through a different experience and um, we'll, we all have different thoughts as well. So I really liked how you were like, how do you feel about it? Mm -hmm. So once you know that person's perspective, you can start leaning towards this way or that way so you won't say things that offend them or make them think a certain way that you'll push them away. Yeah. Uh, I can also share with our guests that from Governor Newsom's office, there are incentives out there now. It's called Vax for the Win. Uh, you could look that up. And for as of May 27th, the first 2 million people getting their first dose, and this is any age, and completing their vaccinations, they get a $50 grocery gift card. So that is an incentive that's out there. And then there's also some pretty significant lotteries for $50,000 and a million and a half dollars. Um, there was one last Friday, there's another one this Friday, and on June 15th. All right. Uh, there's a question, how do you discourage your peers or youth from spreading misinformation? That's a great question. That's a tough one. Um, if you do. Maybe that could be part of the question. Yeah, I do encourage it to like, um, especially with my little sister, because she's like, um, all, like, all her little friends are like, your family's going to turn into like zombies and stuff. She's like, no, they're not. They're safe. Like, your family's going to turn into, like, cause your family didn't get the vaccine, you know? Like, little things like that. I encourage you to tell her, like, no, like, explain to them why we're going to be safe. 
Mm. You know, like you're not gonna like just sound like, oh, we're not gonna choose zombies. You're gonna explain, be like, oh, we got the shot because of this, this, and this, and this. And when it's ready for me, I think I'm gonna take it. Like, you know, like let her know that um, it's yeah, it's funny to joke around with like the rest and stuff. But then at the end of the day, know that that's not gonna happen. You know, like be like comforted by yourself as in knowing that like I'm not gonna turn into a zombie. My hand is not gonna fall off. Like all of these, I'm not being controlled. I don't have a chip inside me. You know. Like, those little things as in, or when they were like, because peers have talked to me before and they're like, oh, like, did you know that you're going to get herpes? And I'm like, oh, actually, no. I talked to my partner and they said that I'm not going to get herpes because this has been researched for four years. Like, they didn't just out of the nowhere make the vaccine. No, they've been researching it and there's experience and thought and everything put back into it. It's not just like a vaccine that came out of the nowhere, like, we don't know what's going to happen with it. No, we know what's going to happen with it, and we know why we brought into it, you know? Mm. So if I'm hearing you right, it's not just uh, shooting down misinformation, it's also offering the context, Definitely. the understanding yes. of why is that information not accurate, and what are, what, are, what are the points of information that you could consider? Yes, because then if you just tell them, like, oh, that's wrong. And they're like, okay, but why is it wrong, you know? Because if you don't explain to them on, like, why you're not going to turn into a zombie, and their mind will keep telling themselves, like, oh, I'm going to turn into a zombie because of this and this and this, and then they're going to wait until next year so I can turn into a zombie, you know? Like, feeding themselves, like, all of these other myths. So, like, bust the myths with, like, other information. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to turn into a zombie, and this vaccine has been researched for four years, so I think I'm going to be safe, you know? Great. Yeah. Thanks. So it looks like we are out of time for Q&A. I really want to appreciate everybody's questions. These are fabulous questions coming in. And um, please feel free to reach out to us through our different websites, and, and we'll continue answering these questions the best way we can. Before I pass it back to the Nicoles, I'd just like to take a minute to thank our panelists. Amariah, I want to thank you for your inquisitiveness to ask your peers what their concerns are and for your strong organizing spirit to make sure that each and every one of those questions gets answered. And Lupita, I'd like to recognize you for your activist journey into your voice, for your commitment to the health not just of your peers but of our entire community, and for your invitation through modeling to other young people so that they can know that they have a voice and that they could take action in times like these. And to Ferris, as a parent and a community member, I want to thank you for your tireless efforts, your grounding presence, and your huge heart for every young person in our county. We're truly lucky to have you in the leadership role that you hold. And a final thank you to all of you who have joined us for this key conversation. You're very appreciated. And we appreciate you, Daron, for making this possible teaching your own advocacy and, and voice to others and providing the space for these young activists to do their thing. It's wonderful to see and wonderful that you could share it with all of us. So thank you. We, I think we do have time for at least one more question and I hope you're seeing all of the uh, applause that you're all getting in the chat. Um, so we had a question from Deborah about advice on communications channels to explore more. So I know you've used Instagram and the, the videos that we shared from Lupita. What, what else um, do people think that, that radios or flyer, radio ads, flyers, what, what, what might work at, at a school setting as opposed to out in the world? Do you have other ideas about getting the word out the way that you are? Do you want to answer? Um. Um, I would just say like more videos and like sharing and maybe like some articles or just something where it's easy for people to access so they get all the information. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I think the best way to put information out there would probably be like a video they can come back to or um, something on media because I think everybody's on media, especially like the teenagers. And I feel like right now that's 
who you really should like jump at. And um, a big reason why I feel like um, teenagers are a good like person to jump at is because sometimes when I find out information that my parents didn't know about, I'd later on in dinner and talk to them about it and be like, did you guys know that this is going on? And did you know that field workers can now get their shots? And that's when they first found out that mm -hmm. they could get their shots. And which, when we talk about social media, what um, what are some of the mediums right now? We talked about Instagram. Any others that you'd recommend to our audience? Uh, definitely Twitter, because a lot of people do go on Twitter for a lot of information. And when um, something's on Twitter, another person can retweet it. And so if it gets retweeted, then like my followers see that. And then my followers retweet it to their followers, and it keeps going on and on and on. So I feel like that would be the best way to get a message out there. And there's times where like you can pin it, so whenever like someone comes back to your um, page or whatever, they see that the first little tweet that you have on there could be about vaccination or something important. Then they use that information and probably retweet it and back to their friends as well. And Ferris, is there any anything you want to contribute to that question? I think uh, you know the uh, um, getting uh, you know when I when the word of mouth. Uh, part is, is super important for, for youth. And, and, and so I think that, you know, creating, um, you know, the, these, these, uh, these forums where we can, we can bring youth together and, and have them, I think, seeing each other on video and seeing each other uh, getting vaccinated, I think that's been really powerful. When I've talked to youth about it, um, a lot of times, I think they're, they're, they're who, uh, you know, I really appreciated your comment earlier, which is let's find out what the youth are, what it is that they're, that they're concerned about. And then being able to, if it's information that they need and f find out who they need to get that information from, I think is, is really good. And also, um, and then also knowing if it's, if it's the parents who are the ones with the concerns or if it's youth who are the ones with the concerns, because that's, that would use a different approach for us. And so, um, and, and many times both of them have concerns. Uh, so, uh, so I think it's a, it's a listening really first, and then and then creating uh, the right message that uh, that that uh, that that uh, they, they may want to be able to listen to and participate with, engage in. Well, listening is always good advice. So, thanks to all of you. Um, we are we are just uh, incredibly grateful that you are doing what you're doing and also sharing it with us. And we will make sure to get links out to everyone when we send out a follow up email with uh, links to the recordings and the information as well. But before we close out, we have a couple upcoming events to share with you. Let's see. And they also just launched our feedback survey for today's event. Uh, if you could take a moment to. Pull that out so that you can uh, share your thoughts about how today's session went and what you uh, liked about it. We definitely appreciate the feedback and, and it helps us plan future events like this. Um, and as I mentioned, we uh, you know, do a pretty regular schedule almost weekly of these Core Institute events. Um, they're not always on Tuesdays. So you'll see in June, we have a couple different events happening on different days of the week, but we invite you to, um, Join us this week, uh, actually uh, tomorrow, for one of our ACEs Aware Network of Care learning sessions. This is actually the final session in a six session series that's been hosted by First Five Santa Cruz uh, with Core Investments uh, about this idea of like, how do we really build those connections and get to know each other better uh, as we think about different ways that healthcare providers, educators, social service providers, again, are working together to support uh, children and families and members of our community. So the registration links, Gisela has posted those in the chat if you're interested in attending. We're also supporting a uh, training next week on using data share and learning how to create data dashboards that then uh, you can use for planning programs or understanding community needs. So again, registration uh, is in the chat. And coming up later this month, we'll have a gender and sexuality training uh, led by the Diversity Center as part of our Core Institute series. Uh, we don't have the registration link for that yet, but keep an eye out for that. And then we are taking a break that last week in June and we'll be back in July with more events. Um, and basically once you've registered for one of our events, we just keep you on our email list until you, until you tell us to take you off. So you will get the notices for these events uh, if you're interested. 
We thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Daron and Amariah and Lupita and Ferris. I, I learned a lot. I'm already vaccinated, but I want to make sure that others, you know, have this information as well. So thank you so much. And for everyone else, thanks for being here and we hope to see you again at an upcoming event.